people can go Google about this. This is going to affect millions of Americans. Now, the US is already a place that I think has 30 to 40, 40 million people unemployed. And it's important for you and I to understand the US economy, at least in general. And I'm sure you're teaching your community of investors that why? Because the US is a country, bro, that has about, in terms of their GDP, it's about 21 trillion. Now, in terms of world GDP, that contributes about 23 to 25% of world GDP. So when we understand very clearly what happens in the US, you can then... Today, we have a very, very special guest and his name is Mario Singh. See, Mario Singh, I've known him for some time, right? Well, the first time I actually saw him was when I was a student. I was sitting down and I saw him on stage. And let me just read you a bit of his uh, bio. Let me just read you a bit of his bio, right? Like, dudes, you're going to be mind blown by his bio. Listen, listen, listen to this. Listen to this, right? So, Mario Singh. Let me just read you, right? Hold on. Give me two seconds. Dude, it's crazy, man. This guy is just nuts. So Mario Singh has basically, you know, spoken on CNBC. He has spoken on Bloomberg. He's appeared live to millions of people worldwide. He's coached over 20,000 people in the art and science of training, including institutional traders from ICBC as well. Dude, he's written so many books and his latest book is this book. Right, it's this book, right? And it's called Secret Conversation with Trading Typhoons, Uncovering Timeless Wisdom from the World's Greatest Financial Minds. You see, in this book, he has interviewed financial billionaires. He has his his friends with all these guys who are real tycoons. It's crazy, right? So, anyways, you know, Mario resides in Singapore, as in Singapore, and his beautiful life a wife is Shaleen, and they have two children, Chantel and Elliot. All right. So again, this guy is a it's a it's a brother of mine and hey man. Before we actually bring him on, I just want to share something. Today, I want you guys to actually take a picture of me and Mario, right? So again, if you learn something, you know, throughout this entire conversation, take a picture of me and Mario, share your best lessons and tag me, Six Pack Investor on IG. You're going to follow me on Instagram. I'm Six Pack Investor or tag Rashbin on Facebook. And what I'll do is this, share your best lessons and five people will win a cash prize. Last week, I gave out money to so many people. It's crazy, right? So this week, I want you to take a picture of me and Mario. I'll repost it by tomorrow. We'll announce the winners. All right. So how many of y'all are in it to win it? If you're in it to win it, type in in it to win it. Come on, guys. Let me see. How many of y'all are in it to win it? If you are, type in in it to win it. Fantastic. Absolutely amazing. Come on, guys. Let me see the comments. Yo. So little people, come on, guys. This is, you know, you literally have nothing to lose. Just share your best lessons. Tag me. Tag Mario Singh. Right. Just share it. That's it. Right. And again, I'll pick five people to win a cash prize. Because why not? So again, just take a picture of me and Mario. Make sure you get a nice picture, okay? Shave today for you. Okay, anyways, so let's get started. Let's get started, shall we? So what I want to do is this very, very simply. Uh, I want to actually start bringing on Mario. Mario, what's up, man? Can you come on, bro? <coughs> what's up, brother? Hey, man. Hi, guys. Hi, Mario. Guys, if all of you all can see Mario, you can hear him. Type in, hi, Mario. Hi guys, hi everyone who's logging in. Amazing, it's like 800 plus of you. Absolutely Thank amazing. You guys, me very, very good, very, very good. Guys, all of them. Bro, there are people right now from India, from Singapore, from KL, from Australia, literally all over the world, brother. Woohoo! Absolutely. Guys, how many of you are like, excited? I've been excited for Mario. So, dude. You know, today I want to share some stuff, right? So we're going to have a conversation. We're going to talk about a lot of things, right? But Mario, yeah. you know, I started reading the book, bro. You have? I have. Of course I have. Brother, of course. But I tell you, the first page, the first page had me, it gave me chills. Which part? Let me read it to you. Never did I dream that our meeting at that cafe 10 years ago would spark a journey that has touched thousands of lives globally for the better. Thank you for igniting that vision in me. I have never looked back since. And this was dedicated to Jack. I don't know who Jack is. Who's this Jack guy? Old, old friend, man. But just by you reading that, I can understand why it gives you the chills, bro. You're stepping into a bigger vision now, man. Dude, it gives me the chills. Guys, you know, for those of you all who don't understand what me and Mario are talking about, I met him in PS Cafe on Thursday. 
All right. I met him at that cafe in Thursday. Dude, I'm going to write a book in 10 years. And I'm going to write the same lines. And I'm going to write, uh-huh. Mario, never did I dream that I'm meeting at that cafe, PS Cafe 10 years ago, will spark a journey that has touched billions <laughs> of lives. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that, okay? You better be right. writing that book, huh? I'll be writing that book in 10 years' time and I'll write, Mario, thank you for igniting that vision in me. I have never looked back since. Brother, that day on Thursday, you asked me to step into my calling. I and Mame, I will step into my calling. And it says, do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Woohoo, man. Bro, you're talking to me through this book, brother. <laughs> Do it. I'm telling you. I'm just going to, it's, it's, a, it's a paid forward thing. You pay I can me. feel the passion. Yes. Carry on the torch, man, bro. Brother, I'm telling you, man, it's crazy. Guys, this book is absolutely phenomenal. Bro, talk about, talk about Ray Barros in the book. Tell, tell them about Ray Barros. Sure. So Ray is also one of my earliest mentors. I was trained in the foreign exchange market. Yeah. So a little bit about my background. Um, I graduated in Singapore in NUS. Uh, didn't do too well. So I came out with third class honors. Shattered my mom's dreams, bro. Third class honors in uh, chemical engineering. Couldn't really find a decent job. So bummed around a little bit here and there. And... Uh, what happened was I, I did meet a mentor and that, that was awesome. A mentor that firstly taught me about success principles. So that kind of opened my mind, right? And thereafter, I met uh, two of my specific mentors were Kathy Lean. So these two are very well known in the, uh, in the foreign exchange market, right? Kathy and Ed, who I both profile in the book as well. So during that journey, I got to know uh, Ray Barrows and Ray, bro, you would absolutely enjoy the interview I did with him. So this is smack in the middle of the book, uh, my, my uh, interview with Ray Barros. Bro, page this one, guy, two, three. page one, two, three. All right. Someone's doing his homework, eh? Hey, for sure. <laughs> this guy, bro, get this, turned 20 million to almost a billion dollars trading the foreign exchange market. Like. It is right there. In, and his, the, the wisdom is condensed in the 20 questions that I spoke to him about there. You know, I told him to I said, uh, Ray, could you divulge all your secrets? Because this guy has been trading for years, right? Mm-hmm. And, and these are the real deal, bro. I mean, you know, sometimes many people say, oh, is it a scam? I don't know, can you all be really making this kind of money? And, and these are people, li- living, breathing people that all of us can be checking out. And bro, let me tell you something else, right? That I hope can benefit the audience. Huh? The real people, the real deal will actually share almost Everything, if not everything they know. You know why? Because they know for a fact that their time on earth is limited and they want the good work to carry on. They wow. want the good work to carry on. So this is not like the Chinese Kung Fu, uh, bro. I know you understand a bit of Chinese. Uh, you know where, where they say, oh, uh, meaning to say, right, if I've got 18 moves in Chinese Kung Fu, uh, the max I'm going to teach you is like 15 or 16 and I'm going to keep two for myself so that you never get better than me. But that is passe thinking, bro. That's, that's thinking in scarcity. The real true blue people, and that can be in any endeavor, like, whether it's business, entertainment, or, or what have you, right? They will tell you everything they know because they want you to excel better than them to carry on the good work and impact more and more people. Wow, dude. Guys, are y'all taking notes, my friends? Are y'all taking notes? This is so important, right? See, the best people, again, dude. Guys, I am taking notes. If I'm taking notes, you better, very well, make sure you're taking notes as well, right? Again, one more time, success leaves clues. Can all of y'all type in success leaves clues? A lot of y'all are impressed by Mario's Chinese, right? I still remember very, very clearly. The first time I heard him speak was on National Achievers Congress 2013, I believe. And, you know, he spoke such fine Mandarin. I was like, wow. Hey, Mario, give them some Mandarin some more, bro. Bro, if I'm going to say this, you won't be able to sleep. Okay, now let me speak some Chinese. Uh, one of my earliest mentors taught me this, okay? And I'm going to say it in Chinese first. He said, 世界上没有成功的事业,只有成功的人. What it means is that in this entire world, there are no successful businesses 
only successful people. So that's the first thing. I'm going to tell you something else in Chinese. Another thing my mentor said. Say in life, ah, it really isn't that complicated. No? All he says is you've got to find the right person. All right? You've got to follow the right person. Okay? Find the right person, do the right thing. All right? And, and that's it. It really is about success leaving clues. So this is something Tony Robbins says, which we all know. Right? The key thing, the problem with most of us, bro, is that either we don't go for the ask, for whatever reason. We feel insecure inside. We feel that we are not good enough, that people are not going to you know, help us. But here's the key thing I told you before, that the real mentors will teach you. You just got to open your mouth and ask because they want their legacy to actually be passed down, bro. This is something I learned as well from my mentor. I was thinking, why in the world would they pour out their stuff to me? And I was not financially trained, bro. From someone who was third class honors in chemical engineering, and by the grace of God, I, I sat on CNBC and Bloomberg, conquered the world's top two financial media. Nothing is impossible, man. Really, bro. Nothing is impossible. But where do you, where, how do you get started, bro? Can you bring us back, man? CNBC, Bloomberg, third class honors. But from there, how do you transition and what are the steps? So bring us back a bit and tell us a bit more. So I can remember the first time. Uh, okay, so on CNBC, I, I will always remember this. Uh, so I was sitting at home with my wife, right? And I was looking at CNBC. And I'll never forget, I turned to her and I said, darling, one day I'm going to sit inside there. And the, the thing is, so having the ambition, and here's another thing that I want to share with everyone to encourage you is that you've got to have a huge ambition. Huh? Okay, so this is something Jack Ma says as well. You've got to have that ambition because if you don't have that ambition in front of you, it's not going to be pulling you along, right? You just feel like, oh, I'm just going to be dragging my feet along every day. But if your ambition is so huge, like what you guys are doing at Team Resh, having that, that spirit of giving and wanting to build the biggest community of givers in the world, that's a huge vision. But it's so exciting, right? Even I look at it, I get chills, man. And that vision pulls you along, right? So when I had that vision of wanting to be on CNBC, and you would understand this as, as, as much as all of us, bro, the law of attraction kicks in. I'm not kidding you. There was a time that someone just linked me, linked me up and said, no, would you like to go on CNBC? And here's a learning point I want to share with, with everyone here, okay? The first time I went on CNBC, bro, I was obviously shivering, almost pissing in my pants, excuse my language, but I put myself on the line. There will be many, there's going to be a few defining moments in life that will change the course of your trajectory. I put myself on the line and when you are on CNBC and Bloomberg, I made the fatal mistake first uh, into thinking they would send me the questions. They did not, bro. So obviously when you are on that largest media in the world, right? And they expect you to know, they expect you to know, okay, what do you think is the non-farm payrolls going to be? Mario, what do you think is Australia's consumer price index? Mario, what do you think of uh, New Zealand's manufacturing output? You are supposed to know. If not, you can't be in that chair. The learning point is this, bro. For me, to appear in that chair for five minutes, I had to study for five hours, okay? This is point number one. So point number one being, and this is something I teach my kids as well, don't wish that it were easier, wish that you were better. So hard work is there. And I saw you write one of these posts. You are one of Team Resh. Everybody wants to eat, but no one wants to hunt. I love it, all right? So this is the key. Everybody wants a life of ease. Denzel Washington talks about a life of ease. Ease is a greater threat to success, all right, than actually hard work. Everybody wants a life of ease. No one wants to hunt. Let me give you point two. I know I'm going on a little bit, but point two, bro, and this is where it opened my mind. When I was on CNBC for a while and I became good enough that I was called a co-host, now, a co-host means I'm sitting in that chair and I'm not the one being interviewed anymore. I'm the one sitting in that chair with the presenter and we are interviewing other CEOs of the banks. And bro, it was my turn to ask them, dear Mr. CEO, what do you think of the non-farm payroll? What do you think of the consumer price index? And that, bro, was the culmination of don't wish that it were easier wish that you were better because when you get to that stage it became so much easier isn't it i didn't have to strive to study for five hours i didn't even have to study at all bro 
because it was my turn to ask those dudes, like, what exactly do you think about the market? So when you rise, when you get higher and higher in society, honestly, it does get easier. The problem is many people are not willing to pay the price. So I keep saying, you are going to pay the price anyway. You might as well pay the price now. Pay the price early so that you can enjoy later rather than enjoy for a short time now and end up paying the price forever. Pay the price up front, man. Guys, how many of you all feel this advice is solid? How many of you all feel it's gold? Type in gold, my friend. Type in gold. I want to see the comment section fly. Yo, look at that. Dude, I am learning so much. Solid man. gold, I'm seeing. Oh, dude, this is crazy, man. Dude, guys, I want you to understand this one thing. You see, a lot of people, right? A lot of people, they like to come to me, like to come to Mario. Hey, what do I buy? What currency pair? You know, it's the best to invest in tomorrow. Hey, what's the best stock option to actually buy a call on? Right? They ask me this, right? And they always wish for their life to be easy. Guess what? Right? Don't wish for it to be easier. Wish you were better. Right? Enjoy the process. Get better and better and better every day. Take that steps forward. And that's how you succeed. That's how you go from becoming a third class to becoming a person who's interviewed on CNBC. Right? Hey, let me finish that sentence for you, bro, because yeah, it's in my course. fourth book. Huh? My yeah. fourth book, which is coming out, is called The Magical Rule of Three. I headline the story from third class to world class. Oh! Like that, bro. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Oh, oh man, too good, too good. I need to write this down. I need to write this down. Third class. To world, world class. Wow. <laughs> Puts a smile on my face, brother. Puts a smile on my face. Oh, you know, you know. The only thing about me, brother, is that I don't even have any class, bro. I didn't go to university, so <laughs> I can't write that. But anyways, bro, and that's why greater things than this you will do. Okay. Hey, it, huh? I best believe it, man. I believe it. I claim it, brother. I claim it. I claim it. All for his glory, man. All for his glory. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I, I've got so many questions to ask you, right? So tell us, man, right? So this year has been crazy, crazy, crazy in the markets, right? Unprecedented. Yes. I don't think we've seen anything like this in our lives, right? I'm talking not just in terms of markets. I'm talking in terms of like, you know, the way we lead, we live our lives. Right, mm -hmm. it's crazy. You know, I used to, you know, we used to travel all the time. You know, crazy schedules. You know, planes here, planes there, planes everywhere. And right now, stuck at home. I haven't been home for such a long time in the last, I don't even know how many years already. Right, yeah. markets have changed tremendously. What are the biggest shifts that you're currently seeing right now? Tell, tell us. Well, bro, I, I started talking about this uh, to actually audiences as early as last year. Okay, now let me just give a snapshot to everyone so that they understand the magnitude of what is happening, all right? So I, I, I think in a, in a few different areas, but, but bear with me because I really just want to add um, a, a lot of value to, to all the listeners now, all right? Now, we need to understand uh, that a major crash happens once every 11 to 12 years, thereabout. Major, major, okay? We can go as far back uh, as 1973. So this is the oil crisis when US and Canada were, which are the two of the biggest oil producing nations, we were going through a period of industrialization, okay? They couldn't produce enough oil. What happened was stagflation kicked in, recession big time. This is 1973-74. You fast forward that to 1985, October. Many of your, your, your stock traders would know uh, Black Monday. So this is October 1985, all right? Started in, started in Hong Kong, affected the FTSE, and then went over to the Dow Jones. It ravaged markets from east to west. Okay? So from 73, 74, you went to 85. And then you had 97, which is the Asian financial crisis. Right? Started in, uh, obviously, Thailand. Ravaged even uh, Indonesia, South Korea. 1997. 97. That's right. So after 97 was 2008. 11, 11 years after that, right? Global financial crisis. And now we are in 2020. So... There was obviously a huge sell-off. End of March, we saw a huge sell-off in that. Bro, there are, here's the way I think about things, all right? It's very important for me what the IMF thinks about. Mm -hmm. So the, the International Monetary Fund, that is important for me. Now, the chief economist of, uh, of the IMF, I think uh, Gita is her name, Gita Gopina. And she says, uh, chief economist, uh, bro, this is the worst recession. This is going to be the worst recession 
for the next like 170 years. I mean, dating back uh, to even as even even before the Great Recession, she says. So that's bad. But the key thing that many people are asking: so why in the world then are markets going up, man? Why is it going up? And and I wrote about this in Business Times, and I, I write every Monday for the Singapore Business Times. And last Monday, I, I wrote about this, right? So a couple of reasons why it's going up. We have to understand why it's going up. It doesn't, and, and at the end of the day, if we are practical, we do want to make money. There is a, a, a community of investors. We just got to understand the undercurrent. So markets are going up for a couple of reasons, right? Number one, it is a forward guidance mechanism. Better days are ahead is what people are saying. But more importantly, number two, bro, the trillions of dollars that is being injected into the market, they're finding their way into the stock market. Happens at every QE, okay? However, here's something that's interesting. Huh? By the end of July, and this is going to be in the next 11 days, huh? mm. a few million Americans are going to be losing that. There's this relief safety net that they have that the, that the US is paying them, I think about 600 US dollars a week. Huh? That comes to an end 11 days from now. Mm. 11 days okay so people can go google about this this is going to affect millions of americans now the u.s is already a place that i think has 30 to 40 40 million people unemployed and it's important for you and i to understand the u.s economy at least in general and i'm sure you're teaching your community of investors that why because the u.s is a country bro that has about in terms of their gdp is about 21 trillion now, in terms of world GDP, that contributes about 23 to 25% of world GDP. So when we understand very clearly what happens in the US, you can then extrapolate that to what happens globally. So I know I'm plucking a few things, right? But I mean, later when we get a bit more specific, I can share with you like, what do I see where the US dollar is going or, or, or you know, some of the things that, that, that mm. at least I'm looking at. Mm. Wow, dude. So 11 days. That's very, very important. Guys, I mean, we all think this is amazing information and very, very important information, right? If you believe that's important information, type in great, man. Type in great tomorrow. So type in something, man. Right? Like, I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. I'm listening to, to Rash and myself. Right, dude. That's, that's amazing, right? So 11 days from now, right? So people will lose their safety net. Right? So again, right. it, it's very, very interesting because, you know, the moment they actually got their money, I saw a lot of people were like, oh, the market's down. Let me pump it in. Right? The first thing they do, they don't pay themselves first. They try to see how they can get rich fast. And that's what a lot of them did. And hey, but once that relief net, the safety net comes off, then what happens? Right. Yeah, and, and, and here's the key thing, bro. So, and I'm sure there are, bro, you and your community would have made tons of money, man. I mean, even in, in, in the last couple of months, right? Because when markets are crashing, and this is a great thing. And I, I never understood the wisdom of Warren Buffett until much later when he says, all right, be greedy when others are fearful. Now, some people may get offended by that, but at the end of the day, all he is saying, you must be counterintuitive to the dominant emotion of the market at that time. That's all that he's saying. And I'm sure there are tons of opportunities all around, right? Example, if you look at the last couple of months, Zoom has gone up. All the e-commerce companies have gone up. Netflix has gone up, right? So all these, there are tons of opportunities all over the world. Gold is now at a 10-year high. The key thing, as you said, is always education. Now, let me summarize in this statement, okay? Our earning potential is only limited by our learning potential. If you want to earn more, you just got to learn more. It really is as simple as that. If ever people want a bona fide formula, it is really about learning more. So when you're telling me you have, you have a team, you know, team rest is a team of teachers, a team of education, and you, that's brilliant, bro. Because at the end of the day, it really is about learning. When people learn, they are lifting the lid of their earning potential. And therein, that, that is the entire secret. There really isn't any other secret to it. Wow, absolutely incredible. So Mario, tell us, man, like in terms of your own like personal portfolio, for example, how do you structure it, right? So I know, I know Forex is a, a big part of your portfolio as well, foreign exchange, you know, properties. Like tell us, tell us a bit and how do you actually structure it? How do you so start? I, how, how have you evolved? Yep. Yeah. So in the past, it was all about trading the, the foreign exchange market. I started with that, did pretty well for myself. After that, I mean, to where I am now, in a sense, uh, I own, uh, I used to 
invest in U.S. properties. At one time, me and a couple of friends, we bought a mall, a, a, an entire shopping mall in the U.S. We exited, made some good money from there. Uh, got properties in Malaysia, in uh, in Philippines. So, so property is a bit of a portfolio. Um, I have a hedge fund, right? It's called Pinnacle Asset Management. So that one invests also in uh, in currencies and in stocks, all right? In stocks, uh, indexes, equities, and all that. And uh, I do invest a little bit in some private equity. So that's a little bit of my my fun money. Fun money in a sense. And, and don't get me wrong when I say this, it's like uh, for like like for young startups. Mm. You no, know, in a sense, if we uh, if, if if we put in some cash and and, and if it if it goes well, so that's a, a small portfolio. So in summary, there's real estate, there is currencies. All right, I used to touch a little bit of Bitcoin, but I didn't look at it for the last. I remember bro, I bought like two Bitcoins when it was like eight thousand dollars. I don't even know where it is now, so I'm not even looking at it. Okay, so I just uh, you know I, I just put sixteen thousand US in a couple of Bitcoins, and I think I bought some Ethereum. But probably for me, because my training has been in the foreign exchange market. So that is a, a, a space that uh, I'm looking at. And naturally, probably if you ask me now, like where is my biggest portfolio among all these things that I spoke to you about, bro, it really would be my own company. So in, in a sense, because uh, I, I run a, a brokerage firm, right, called Fullerton Markets, so like whatever profits is being generated for me, I think it was just smart to always just reinvest the profits and just grow the company bigger and bigger. So that is my passion. It's something I'm doing every day, loving it, building a wonderful team around, uh, around Fullerton Markets and just, yeah, just taking it to the moon, man. Nice, nice, nice. So, oh, dude, that's absolutely amazing, right? So again, investing in own business, whole portfolio, you know, absolutely Guys, you know, so currently right now, your portfolio, how many businesses do you have besides Fullerton Markets? You have a whole other host of businesses as well, yeah? Yeah, so Fullerton Markets is one. Um, I have a hedge fund called Pinnacle Asset Management. I have a marketing training company called Pipbox. So Pipbox mm-hmm. handles marketing, training, events, and all that. And I've just, uh, I have an IT company that we are exploring uh, fintech initiatives, AI, blockchain. So, these, so that is more uh, my innovation arm. You know, that for me is like, like what in Google, they call it the moonshot. So over there, I have a team of uh, software engineers, right? So they are researching, they are building a couple of uh, fintech stuff to see how we can uh, moonshot lah, in a sense. Very nice. So yeah. Mario, I want to ask you a few questions. Number one, uh, let's talk about the dollar, right? So let's talk about the US dollar, right? So specific questions. Uh, where do you see the US dollar going? And what is the effect on QE, right? There's so much of printing going on. And that's a, no, I really wanted to ask an expert on, you know, what's the effects in the short run and the long term with regards to all these printing and this massive injection to the market? Yeah, this is a great point. So, you know, regardless of whether we are a trader or an investor, right? I think at the end of the, the, the day, it really boils down to something called time frame. So I think it's a great starting point. You know, where do you see it short term, long term? Now, long term can be anywhere in a few years. I think most of us who are logging in now are more interested in, say, the short term. And let me yeah. quantify short terms. Anything maybe, say, below a year. I think that would be a fair statement, right? Like, so where do we see it happening in the next three to six months? So before I tell you where I think it's going, I want to give everybody some data, okay? So when I give you some data, it helps you to understand how I'm making my decisions. So let's look at a few things uh, that, I, that I look at. Number one, one of the key data I always look at is something called non-farm payroll. So non-farm payrolls is, ne- is the uh, number of people who are hired in the US outside of the farming industry, hence the term non-farm payrolls. Many traders, many investors, many institutions are always looking at this number. The latest number that came out just two weeks ago, so it comes out on the first Friday of every month. The last number that came out, if I'm not wrong, 4.8 million jobs. Is that good or is that bad? We must always measure this number versus the forecasted number. So for those of you who are listening, like, like the, the non-farm payroll for the first time, you must always take that number. If you take it on its own, it doesn't make any sense. Take that number and measure it with what is the forecasted number. So 4.8 million was the actual number. The forecasted number was 3 million. So that's a good thing. It's a good thing that more people were employed compared to the forecasted number. So that is in the, 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 the plus point, right? More people are employed and that's a good thing because there's been 30 million plus people who are unemployed in the US. Next thing, 
the unemployment figures in the US are dropping. It has dropped, latest figures, huh? from BLS. BLS stands for the Bureau of Labor Statistics that churns out all these official numbers. The unemployment figures has dropped from about 13.3% to about 11%. So this is a good thing, but I'm going to put an asterisk there. The asterisk is the, the Labor Statistics Department cannot estimate the number of people who have been furloughed. So furloughed is a is, is essentially taking a leave of absence, right? You are employed, but you're not being paid. So they don't know this is how many people. So that to me, fine. That's just like hanging in the balance. After all these figures, now let me tell you how I'm deciding. In my opinion, bro, I feel the US dollar over the next three to six months is going to continue to weaken. Not strengthen, huh? weaken. Although it is the world's biggest reserve currency. And so now here are my points that I'm going to substantiate to everybody why I think it is going to weaken, okay? Point number one, um, there is something called the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index. Now, this is a, 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 but these are some of the indicators that I look at, okay? So Consumer Sentiment Index is important because it tells you what is the sentiment of, of people who are buying stuff. Hmm. I want everybody to write this down, guys, that... that over all the webinars that I myself have attended and listened to, uh, some of the top in, in investors around the world, understand this sentence, okay? The Federal Reserve can solve the liquidity problem, but they cannot solve the revenue problem. Let me say that again. Uh. The Federal Reserve can solve the liquidity problem, but they can't solve the revenue problem. And let me explain what that means. It is like, example, if you're a dying man, okay? Federal Reserve comes and pumps the guy's chest with that electric uh, charger, so, so, so to speak. So that is, the, that is the, the artificial support, okay? If the heart doesn't get beating by itself, the man is going to die. So that is the revenue part of the business. That has got to start beating, bro. But that hasn't been beating. If you just look at the US, and I say the US, it's important for all of us to look at it because... It is still the world's largest economy. Let me give you a snapshot of some of the biggest companies in the US. Huh? Biggest companies outside of the tech first. So your FANG stocks, our Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, Microsoft. Let's leave them aside first. Okay, because those stocks are flying. If you look at the, the bread and butter ones, you look at United Airlines, all right, the US largest airline, they're going to be laying off thousands of people. Thousands, if I'm not wrong, it's like, I don't know. I can't remember, 10, 20,000. We can Google this. Chevron, the second largest oil producer in the US, is going to cut about 20% of its workforce of 45,000 people. That's 20,000 people that's going to get cut off, man. Under Armour is cutting a few thousand. Uber is cutting a few thousand. Boeing is cutting about 7,000. So things are not adding up. The stock market is going up, yes, because that's liquidity finding its way into the stock market, but the real economy is not moving yet, bro. So, mm. these are the reasons I feel that the US is, is going to, uh, the US dollar is going to drop. Number one, the consumer uh, sentiment index. So, this is called the Michigan Consumer Index, all right? Just, just for, for uh, I, I was recently reading this, that number has been falling. So that number was about 78 in June. It has fallen to 73. So people are not feeling confident to spend. And that can always be a problem for the economy yeah, when people are not spending. Okay? So that's point number one. Point number two, as I mentioned, in fact, earlier in the interview, the $600 program is going to stop by the end of July. Okay? In about 11 days, they're going to be losing this social safety net. Millions of Americans will not be able to make payments anymore. Okay, number three, and this is a bit more uh, specific to the financials, huh? just point number three, is that I'm not sure if, if you guys have heard of the 10-year bond yield. So this is the US Treasury. Okay, many people in the institutional market will look at the 10-year bond. Why? Because that is the best gauge for growth and inflation. Yeah. That number has been dropping. That yield has been dropping. So when it drops, it basically tells you that the confidence of the economy recovering, they don't feel it's going to be that fast. 
So I know it's a lot, bro. What I'm, I'm talking about is, uh, I'm trying to, to, to uh, summarize it in a sense. So I always give the reasons first, instead of me just shooting off my mouth and feel that, oh, it's going to weaken. But I say it is going to weaken, but I'm substantiating that with the thought process. And for me, if you talk about, I'm going to give you guys a bit of a bonus, huh? what, what me and my team are, are looking at in terms of possible trades, okay, that we are looking at. So a good trade that, that we are looking, and we are looking in the, in the foreign exchange market. So we are looking at dollar Swiss, USD CFH. All right. Uh, sorry, USD uh, CHF, USD Swiss franc. So because US dollar is going to weaken and the Swiss franc traditionally is also seen as a strong safe haven. So a, a shot on the dollar Swiss is something that we're looking at. All right. A sell on the dollar Swiss. Number two, also because the US dollar is weakening. But there are a couple of countries whose economies have recovered. New Zealand being a prime example. Jacinda Ardern is doing fantastic as a leader. And in fact, we're looking at the manufacturing numbers in New Zealand. It is also going up. So I'm, I'm going to share with everyone uh, one long trade and one short trade, or basically one buy and one sell. Sure. So a, a, a sell on the dollar Swiss and a buy on the, the Kiwi dollar, on the NZD USD. Hmm. Wow, good. Are you all enjoying this? Well, guys, I, I am just taking it in. As in, as Mario is talking, I, I know I can't keep up with this question because I'm taking down all these notes, right? Like I'm writing, I'm writing, I'm writing, writing, guys. Yo, guys, I don't even appreciate Mario right now, right? How many of you all love what he's sharing? How many of Thank you, you so much, man. No holds barred, eh? Let's all, I mean, look, and here's the key thing. As a community, bro, I'm going to talk a little, I'm, I'm, I, I'm a little bit biased to the foreign exchange market only because it has, it has done well for me, okay? Absolutely. In the last 15 years, in fact, there are some people I see as my, my former students inside some of the chat group, I recognize some of the names there. And I've been trained in the foreign exchange market all these years. Mm -hmm. And bro, here's the one thing that I want to share with everybody. Why, regardless of whether we are, we are trading options or stocks or crypto or bonds, it doesn't matter. The basic denominator in mm -hmm. any country is a country's currency. Mm. The lowest common denominator is a country's currency. Let me give you a classic example. Let's just say Japan. When Japanese money, as an example, flows into Singapore, okay? The money, let's just say from institutions or pension funds or, or what have you, will always flow into a few areas. The real estate market, the bond market, the stock market. Mm. In any cross-border flows, financial flows, FDIs, foreign direct investment, it will mm. always flow into real estate, bonds, and stocks. Yep. Now listen to this. Before it even finds its way into those specific markets, the Japanese yen has got to be converted to Singapore dollars first, in which case it will impact the SGD, JPY, Forex rate. And mm. this is why I say once everyone has a healthy knowledge of the foreign exchange market, it will put you in good state. It will be an absolute bonus to you when you're investing in all the other financial instruments. So guys, uh, bro, I'll tell you something. We need another session where you actually really go through the basics of foreign exchange class and really teach us. Guys, how many of y'all would want this session? Type in I want if you want this session. I don't know. How many of y'all would love that? Right? Really to them. See, my guys mostly uh, stock options guys. Right? I don't think many of them have an understanding of foreign exchange and everything. Dude, we need a proper session with you where we go through like, you know, foreign exchange and you teach us the basics and everything. Mario, you up with that, bro? Sure, bro. Dude. I'll do that for your community. My man, we have close to a thousand people actually um, here listening right now. And hey man, you know, I think Mario is the guy. See, one thing about Mario is very, very similar to me. He almost does it as well as me. Maybe, maybe. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I got that. <laughs> <laughs> he makes things simple, easy to understand and fun. How many of you agree, my friends? How many of you agree? Right? Hey, yo, you need teachers like that, right? You need teachers like that who can make things simple, easy, make it fun, y'all can laugh. Hey, hey. The <laughs> uh, only difference between between Mario and myself is that I have hair and it doesn't have much hair left. Hey, imagine how much I'm saving on shampoo, okay? You're spending all that <laughs> money on shampoo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I use expensive shampoo, bro. Very expensive. I recently paid $3,000 for my shampoo, bro. <laughs> So, bro, I want to ask you, I'll shave my head. Okay, anyways. So, 
<laughs> People are saying PNG and JNG and Doom. Right? Someone is saying, let's go Bota. Yes. Come on, man. Bro, I have to tell you something, and this is serious, okay? Uh, tell me, tell me. God made all heads ball. The ugly ones he covered oh. with hair. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Guys, if you're all bored, type in Amen. Right? If you're bored, type in Amen. <laughs> oh, we got oh, another people typing in Amen to that. Okay, that's cool. Right? But hey, look at Dwayne Johnson. Right? Look at all these <laughs> right? Hey, you got a point, maybe, huh? Okay, bro. So, anyways, I want to ask you a question, man. Right? Like, coming back to business and life and everything. Yes. They, they always talk about, you know, last week I talked to one of my close friends and they talk about coming to an end of yourself, where you surrender all, where you come to the pits and you think, Lord, I need you, right? Like, I can't do this without you. Like, hey, you know, tell us about that, right? So we see the success and everything, but people don't understand what you've been through, man. The pits of hell. Like, you know, going all the way down and, you know, not knowing whether you come back up again. Tell us about that story and how you went through it and all that stuff, man. <sighs> I like the word surrender. Um, maybe I talk a little bit about about I don't know, when you, when you say that, it just brought me to many years ago. I think it's, this is in 2013 or 2014. Uh, at a point where you feel literally helpless, and this is a true story for me, I was going for an appendix surgery. I don't think I've ever told this to anybody. Uh, nobody, nobody who has heard about I don't think I've ever told about this, but when, when you know when they put that gas, mask, that, that anesthetic on you, bro, that is the time, literally, I mean, forgive my language, you're shitting in your pants, uh, Okay. Because I don't know, I say like, this is, I don't know what's going to happen, right? What's going to, because once you, 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 you fall asleep in a sense. So I, that is the point for me when you are in total surrender. You're in God's hands. You're no more in your hands. Another one of my friends gave me a beautiful analogy. And, I'm, and, I, and I, I hope people can understand this. Huh? Bro, when you fall to the lowest of your pits, right? The lowest you can go huh, is in God's hands. That's the lowest you can go. Where else can you go? There's no other way other than up. So after understanding that analogy, right? Maybe let me just share. Uh, maybe uh, yeah. In terms of my my the past, right? So as I'm growing as an entrepreneur as well, sometimes you get into business uh, with the wrong partners. And let me say with the wrong partners, and it's nobody's fault. So I will take responsibility for that as well. Okay, because sometimes we choose the wrong partner. We get into business for the wrong reasons. And I've always said a sentence when it comes to business, right? Business partners will fight for only two reasons. Number one, when you make tons of money. And number two, when you don't make money, you know? Mm -hmm. So these are the two greatest reasons why business partners will fight. But at the same time, I mean, when you surrender, and like I said, I love that word. Um, when you come to the point of literally surrendering, meaning to, to say, okay, Lord, not my, not my will, but yours be done now. To be in a place of total surrender, you would actually reach a place of total peace. And from there, it start building up. So as a specific example, I had a uh, recent interview in, uh, I was profiled on the Straits Times about last month. I think some of you would have seen that article. And then recently, I was profiled on another, uh, on another media called Salt and Light. And I shared my story where I fell all the way down. And I had only a few thousand dollars left. And at a point of time, bro, I, I was given an, an, a, an invitation to fly to the U.S. in Colorado to meet a, a man called Peter Wagner. And Peter Wagner is, uh, uh, in, 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 I mean, in the Christian world, was considered one of the foremost apostles. He has written over 80 books. And we, we didn't, my wife was pregnant with my, with my number two, with, uh, with Elliot. And, but we prayed about him and said, you know, we have to go. I'm sorry, I had to go. So I flew all the way there and, and I spent time with Peter Wagner. And now when I think back, right, when, when I, I, I relate that story to, uh, to, to Salt and Light, I, can, I dare say, bro, that was a turning point, man. Business was going bad, spoke to Peter Wagner, he prayed for me, and, and things just turned. Like. When you reach a point of surrender, right, to say, I can't do anything, none, I, I, I just can't come out of this alive, uh, and things will take a turn. You know, so I think that part is important. Thank you for, for asking that uh, mm. to reach a point of surrender, all right? And then to finally build it back up again. Yes, if you don't, if you don't mind, right? There, it, does anybody in this, in this crowd, in this, in this room right now, kind of feel in this space of surrender where you feel like, hey man, uh, you know, I come to the end of myself. I really don't know what's going on. 
If any of you feel that way, tap in surrender. Right? Tap in surrender. If anybody, again, don't feel shy, right? If you, if you do, right, tap in there. Right? I you need. Maybe let me just share this point, right? Because sometimes entrepreneurship uh, has, you know, some people feel the, the, the pressure to always, the need to perform or to look good. And I think we need to break that mold, bro. You know, for whatever you and your community are doing, right? It's just in terms of, and Gary Vaynerchuk talks a little bit about this, in terms of documenting the journey. I, I, there, there is just no positive impact of just showing off with all these things, oh, the big cars and the Rolexes and all that. It, there is nothing wrong with failing, but there is something wrong with not getting up. All of us fail. And if we are able to document our failures, can you imagine how much the community would grow? I was in fact having this session just today, guys, with my daughter. And I told her, I said, Chantel, daddy has been through a lot, you know, some, because sometimes, you know, my, my girl, she's growing, she's 11 years old, she wants to storm her authority, things like that. And, 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 and we as parents, we have to be in a place to guide them and say, look, daddy has gone through all these things. I have failed before. Chantel, if you listen to this advice, you will grow. You will absolutely grow. So this is something I want to encourage everyone, you know, Thank you for being so honest that, yes, we have, we have failed. We have come to the point of surrender. And that's the beauty of this community, what Resh is building. When you guys are in a community, in a place of support and encouragement, I think that is so powerful. Because honestly, when that happens, miracles will, will come forth. I'll just share one last thing, guys. But this is coming literally uh, in the last one week. I was addressing... Uh, my company has about 120 full-time staff all right, around the world in nine countries. I was giving them the, my half-year review, okay? And I ended that session. Uh, I showed them a picture of, I'm sure some of you have seen it, where African kids, uh, they're sitting in a circle with all their legs together. And that is a scene. It comes from a Kosa word. Kosa is the, the national language of South Africa and Zimbabwe. The word is called Ubuntu. You guys can Google this, okay? The meaning of the word Ubuntu, U-B-U-N-T-U, it means I am because we are. And isn't that beautiful, bro? I am because we are. And this is, is the summary of an entire community. I am because we are. When everyone comes together, sharing our strengths, our weaknesses, complimenting one another, encouraging, supporting one another, everybody moves up. So the power of Ubuntu, I am because we are. And if all of you are dialing in, you know, when you say to yourself, I am because we are, I tell you, your entire essence literally just flies through the roof, man. Wow, wow, wow. Guys, I am inspired. I am learning so much. I learn about Forex. I learn about Mario's hair. I learn about <laughs> so many things, man. I am because we are Ubuntu. Wow, total surrender. Dude, I am loving this so much. Brother, I want to share a quote. I want to share a quote. Yeah, I want to share this quote. And I love this quote, right? It's by one of my favorite speakers. One of my favorite speakers. And his name is uh, Les Brown. And he says this, If you fall, make sure you fall on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Whoa! I'm telling you, I love that quote, man. Make sure you He's fall on good, your back. He's good, man. He just, he just released a latest book called You Have to Be Hungry. That's his favorite, his favorite quote, right? Dude, I, I, I love you, man. I said, you know, one of my, one of my favorite, favorite, uh, one of my first uh, people that I learned from from NAC was actually Les Brown. I think you spoke at his, did you speak with him? Les Brown? I've, I've, I've spoken with uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Jay Abraham, Chris Garner. I don't think I've spoken with Les Brown. Oh, I'm telling you, right? Oh, this man, he's a legend, bro. Absolute legend, man. Maybe we can do an event together with him soon. You know, you know what I'm saying? We can make it All happen. right. Hey, for sure, for sure. You know, we introduce each other. So, dude, you know, I want to, I wanna, you know, share something, right? For those people right now who are, you know, we see a lot of people who, are, who have typed in surrender, right? They might have got retrenched. They might be at the end of themselves without income from their careers, right? A lot of people around the world currently right now today in surrender. Just when you look at the comment section, you can feel a lot of people out there are suffering, right? They hear us. You know, our businesses flourishing and all these things. But hey, man, like on the ground, a lot of people are hurting, right? Whether it's in their finances, whether it's in careers and stuff like that, right? What's the one thing you tell them? And um, what's the, yeah, what's the one thing you tell them, bro? The first thing I'll tell you is don't blame yourself. Yeah, that's the first thing I'll tell you because many people are carrying on this reproach 
in a sense that shit, I'm not good enough, right? Many people, in fact, uh, there is there is this. Oh man, what was that book? I can't remember the name of the book. Like, right? that that one. I read one book, and she said, I think she, she's a psychologist. She said the bottom line for most people is that they feel that they are not good enough. So the first thing I want to tell everyone who's listening in, okay, do not blame yourself. The economy is as such, right? But it will it, it will be a mistake if you if you allow yourself, if you allow the negativity to fester inside. The key thing is to build yourself in an environment. So this is a positive environment, all right? So there could be people listening to this and, 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 and thinking about, man, I need a lifeline, right? At the end of the day, when, when problems come, I think what is so important, firstly, and I know it's been said many times, you just cannot give up. This is the most important thing, okay? Plug yourself in, pick up the phone, call somebody, we are here to support one another. I think that's the most important thing. Many people, we are in different phases of life. But one thing is the same. We should all be growing. All right? And when I say we are growing, if you have reached the stage, bro, and you and Team Rush are, are, are starting to give, that's beautiful. I can tell you, uh, one thing that God plays funny tricks on people, okay? At a point of your greatest need, uh, and I, I, I'm sure you would understand this, uh, you are actually, you need to be sowing into that need. And let me explain this specifically. If you're at a point where you need money, God will put people in front of you uh, that actually needs money more than you. And, 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 and it's going to be a huge challenge uh, to be sowing money into that need. But when you do that, bro, floodgates of heaven will open. Why? Because of your faith. Faith is what will move the hand of God, honestly. Because that and the place of total surrender works absolutely hand in hand. <clears throat> I want to share maybe uh, maybe a verse in the Bible if you will allow me, okay? In 2 Timothy, it says this, okay? Even when we are faithless, he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. You know how powerful is this verse, bro? Even when we are faithless, he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. That is his nature, so I want you to understand, life will throw us curveballs. There will be times when we fall. There will be times we get retrenched. But we have to always understand what is our source, okay? Like you said, what Les Brown mentioned, right? If you can look up, you can get up. I fully believe in that. I've been in the trenches. I know it sucks to be there, but you can never let yourself remain there. You must always be fixated on the goal in front of you. And I think that is so important, bro. You know, what is one thing I try to teach my community every single time. I always tell them, hey man, you know, I try to tell them as much as possible that, hey, you know, the economy is not your source. The foreign exchange market is not your source. You know, God's your source, right? Yeah. And build your, build your foundations on solid ground and everything will, you know, prosper, right? Make sure you, are, you build your foundation on solid, solid ground. And that's what it is for me, right? As, as much, the stock market to me is a tool. You know, I invest in properties, stocks, so many different things, but all of them are just tools, right? Just tools for me to, you know, be able to bless more people, to be able to advance, you know, God's kingdom. Like, that's what it is for me, right? Like, everything is just a tool for me to achieve much greater things, right? So guys, you know, understand is one thing. Making money is not the end all be all. It's just a means, to an end. What is your end goal? That's something to think about, right? Are you say something? Yeah, I, I was going to say something to add to that. Uh. Money, you, you're right when you say money is only a tool. Uh. So let me, let, me, let me share another perspective, okay? There's nothing wrong with getting more money, but there oh. is something wrong when money gets you. Oh. And what that means, uh, bro, all right? I, I, I remember having this chat with one of my earliest mentors, okay? <clears throat> and I said, oh, okay, I'm, made, I'm making maybe this X amount per month or whatever per year. He said, oh, Mario, you need to go to 2x, 3x or that amount. And I, I felt at that moment a little bit offensive. I said, why? Why do I need to do that? And you know what he said? And that changed my perspective on money. Yeah? He said, Mario, when you're making more, it only tells you that you're adding more value to the world full stop. It's what you do with that money that speaks volumes of your character. So, bro, when you have that vision... And if you commit to the vision of having the largest community of givers in the world, that in itself will tell you that money holds no, no ties to you. And that's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant, okay? Because money is only a tool, yes. Money is only a means, yes. 
that is something you have to constantly be teaching and sharing with your community. And I can tell you the, the essence of this is that most people get it. They do get it. However, some of us, and we have to be sensitive to, to many of the people who are logging in. Some of, everyone is at different levels in a sense. Some of us might be very concerned of taking care of our own resources, right? Some of us may have lost a job or we know someone that's lost a job. Some of us may even know people who may be COVID-19 positive. These are all the curveballs that happen. So it is important at the end of the day for all of us to be increasing our learning capacity so that when the markets present you an opportunity, you must go in. One last example. One last example. I know I'm shooting off in a lot of different directions. 12 years ago, in the, in the global financial crisis, uh, Citibank shares, bro, fell to a low of 97 cents. Now, why am I talking about this? Today, if you look at Citibank, I don't know, it's like 40 over 50 bucks per share. Can you imagine if we had scooped up Citibank shares when it was 97 cents, right? How much would we be making today? The key thing is why I'm always telling people they must be taking action now is because none of us on this call has the luxury of waiting another 12 years for a major crash. This is the time to equip ourselves with the strategies, with the knowledge, because it could literally change our financial fortunes. Hey, so true, man. So true. Guys, that is absolutely true. Guys, you know, for those of you all who are on the Zoom call, this, this, uh, this recording is actually available on Facebook as well. Right? So, uh, Team Rash, could you just put in the link of the Facebook, right? So, what I want you all to do, guys, is I want you all to actually share this video on Facebook. Guys, if you all have felt this is gold, if you know whatever you shared about life, about the markets, about Forex, about Citibank, all this stuff, you know, if you all know that it will really impact lives, I want you all to also share that Facebook video, right? So, Team Rash, can you please put down the stuff? Right, Hazik, can you please put it down? Thank you. All right. So, again... The recording is there and y'all need to watch it again and again and again and get it sink, eh? sink in, man. You know, this interview, you got to watch not just once, you got to watch twice, you got to watch thrice, right? Seriously, I'm going to be watching it again for sure, right? See, guys, you know, one thing which I want to share with you is this. This is the reason why, right? This is the reason why it's extremely important to surround yourself with the right people as well. Very, very, very important, right? Like, you see, the reason why I love hanging out with Mario, the reason why they're meeting at a cafe, like for me, it was phenomenal, right? Guys, I'll just share with you something. Like it was so phenomenal, right? Like I was steering and then Mario was steering. And then it's yeah. like, hey, you know, it just was just as inspiring, man. I don't know, you know, two grown ass men crying. <laughs> <laughs> you know? One more good looking than the other. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, you know, it was just inspiring. And, you know, he asked me to step into my vision and since then, brother. Like, dude, you know, we need to get, a, you know, get on a separate call. I need to share with you what's been happening, bro. But it's been insane. But I said, yes. Every day I've been watching the video, bro. The one Every that I sent you? Day, yes, the one you sent me and I've stepped in there. Dude, it's in my dreams now. I've owned it. I close my eyes and I see it. Bro, it's going to happen. It is going to happen, bro. It is happening. It is happening, bro. It is happening. All right. So anyways... I just want to share with you all, you know, my group just put it in, right? The Facebook, if you all actually see the link, right? Please go and share, right? If you, I want you all click on it and click on share. Very, very, very important. And right now, Mario, I have one more question, right? One yeah. more very, very, very important thing. Dude, I just want you, bro, right? Like, you know, for the people right now, right? Tell us, please tell them about your faith. Tell them about, you know, why, you know, uh, having that faith is very, very important. Tell them about if they are truly feeling in the place of surrender, what is the option for them? Like, tell them, man. <clears throat> I have a foundation just to, to uh, my, my foundation is called Soul Rich Foundation. And the, the tagline of my foundation is called uh, Faith, Hope, and Love. Now, I'm very sensitive to the fact everyone who's dialing in, either some of them may have a faith, some of them may not have a faith. All right. Uh, I'm a Christian. And, and uh, there has been so much peace and blessing after I found God. Okay. And in the foundation to the extent, and this word faith, hope, love is actually in the Bible, uh, in the book Corinthians. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. All right, which says, at the end of the day, faith, hope, love remains, but the greatest of these is love. Now, and the reason why it is so important, guys, to have faith, okay, is because we are living in a world, and I'm, getting, I'm gonna get a little ph philosophical here, if you will allow me, okay? We are living in a world today 
that is termed as post-truth. Mm-hmm. Let me explain this. Huh? Two to three years ago, you know, every year Oxford Dictionary shares something called their word of the year. In 2016 or 2017, I can't remember, the word of the year was this word called post-truth. Now, you might be asking, what in the world is post-truth? And now let me explain. The word post-truth means that, oh, truth may matter, but my feelings and my thoughts matter more than truth. We are living in such a world now, and that is dangerous. Let me explain, okay? Here's the key thing, huh? Today, if someone says, if you go tell someone, bro, gravity exists, okay? Gravity exists. And if someone tells you, rash, that may be true for you, may not be true for me, let's all agree to disagree. We are living in such a world now that many people will tend to create, will will tend to move truth into a subjective place, meaning to say things don't matter anymore. They're just, my, my fear, as long as I feel good about it, that's all that matters. And that is a dangerous place to be because truth is truth. There are things that are objectively true. There are things that you have to hold on. You need to have certain absolutes in life. You must have them. If not, your feet will be firmly planted in midair. And when I say that, it is important to have faith, hope, and love. And for me, that is anchored on the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So when you have faith, hope, and love in the Lord Jesus, your entire world opens up, bro. Because that to me is my guiding light that governs everything I do from business to my work to how I run my, my, my charity foundation, how I support 15 different beneficiaries. And I think, oh man, I'm only just beginning in, on, on, on that. Like, I think if everyone who's listening to this, uh, can, can truly understand the meaning of what I'm trying to convey across. When you have faith, hope, and love, your entire world opens up. It really does. Absolutely, man. Dude, and can you, can you, I just want to ask you, bro, could you pray a prayer, prayer? As in, could you pray a, a word of prayer for those people who are, you know, or hurting, who actually want that peace? Guys, how many of y'all would love to have that peace and that love, right, that Mari is talking about? Type in me if you want that, right? Type in me if you want that. Right. See, there's a lot of people who want that peace, that love, right? Mario, so I want you to lead us in a in a prayer, right? Of to to let people find that peace and that love in them. I will do that, man. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, and I thank you so very much for this wonderful session that Resh has organized. Lord, we have almost a thousand people here. Father, when you say when two or three people are gathered in your name, there you will be with them. Lord, you are known by so many names in the Bible. You are the Prince of Peace, you are the King of Kings. Lord, you definitely give us that peace. Father, when we lift up today's session to you, we remember your words when you say that in this world we will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. We have overcome, you have overcome the world. So Lord, we are anchored in your love, your hope, and your faith. And we pray, Lord, for those who are hurting, that we will be ever more so close to you, closer than their very breath, that they may know you as the one true living God. In Jesus' name I pray. In his matchless, majestic name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen to that. Amen to that. Guys, I have absolutely loved the session. Absolutely loved the session. I don't know about you, wow. but I love the session so much. Again, guys, you know, we talk about God's love. We've seen how God has impacted Mario's life so much. He's impacted my life so much. It's been absolutely incredible. Just want to share with you all some stuff that really, really support you. My friends, I'm going to just share this quick thing. All right, so again, guys, this still stands. We have a hashtag giveaway today. I want you to take a picture of me and Mario, right? Uh, then we can put a vote to who's the more handsome one, right? But let's share the let's share our best lessons. Tag six pack invest on IG, Mario Singh as well, right? On Instagram, Facebook, and hey, share your best lessons. So many lessons today, but share your best lessons and five people win a cash prize. I want you all to do that. How many of y'all are in it to win it? If you're in it to win it, type it in it to win it. Very, very important. Let me see. Let me see. All right, so I want you all to do that. There's a hashtag giveaway. And right now, my friends, right, I, we have an exclusive Facebook group. You know, this was started with, by a bunch of our friends, right? Richard, the chairman of Sun Resources, who is Mario Singh's neighbor, his wife, Patrick Liu, Clement Chiang, myself, Sean, right? All of us actually started this group, right? I would love for Mario to be part of this group as well, right? And uh, hey, yeah, for sure he'll be part of this group, right? 
So anyways, it's the wisdom of all of us combined together. This is some of Singapore's very, very best entrepreneurs and business owners. And hey, every week we coach you, we guide you, we help you grow your faith. We do all of that stuff. And my friends, my friends, my friends, I just want to share with you that, hey, you know, the value of all us, all of us put together, you know, if I can put a value to it, it will be priceless. But if I just put a number to it, a random number, it'll probably be about 35,000. I don't know, man. I think that's definitely too little. But hey, right now you get to be in this exclusive group together with us today only for a grand sum of free because he gave us freely first and foremost, right? So it's absolutely free. And if you want to be part of this, guys, how many of you want to be part of this? Type in me if you want to be part of this. If you want to be part of this, very, very, very simply, my friends, I'm going to give you all an invitation. And very simply, you just got to go on to teamrash.com forward slash wealth. And we'll actually send you information so you can actually join the group. You can access to all of us in this group. We'll actually guide you, we'll coach you, we'll mentor you, do all these different things to really help you grow in your faith, to make sure that you succeed in all areas and you find peace, you find faith, hope, and love. Love being the greatest Amen, brother. Of, of them all. So go on to teamrush.com forward slash wealth. The link is in the comment section right now as well. Absolutely amazing. Oh man, I love it so much, man. Mario, my man. Dude, I want to share something, brother. I want to share something. Um, very, very sure. important. Right? So before I end, bro, before I end, I'd love to actually ask you, um, hey man, if there's one song that you love, right? One song that you love. What's the one song that you love? I'm going to play this song and we're going to end up listening to that song, right? Guys, I want you all to stay to listen to that song, right? So we can off Facebook Live right now, just in the Zoom room, right? So Facebook Live, peace. Oh, you're okay, putting up a song. Any yeah. song. Any song, bro. In Christ Alone. Okay, let's go. Yes, this
guys how many of you all how many of you all want mario back for sure man type in yes type in let me see it flood right let me see it flood oh man absolutely amazing so cool right i i'm sure you guys enjoyed it so much and i had guys, a great and, time man you had a great time mario i had an awesome time thank you so much for having me bro mario smile bro we're going to take a picture together Okay, fantastic. Absolutely amazing. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this session. My friends, teamrash.com forward slash wealth. Get on the group and, you know, we're going to share some wisdom with you all if you all want support in this journey, right? Again, guys, you know, I want to share this one thing as an ending off, right? Um, you know, seek God first and all things will be all added on to you. If you're seeking for wealth, if you're looking for peace, whatever it is, seek God first and all things will be added on to you. Amen. So, my friends, Thank you very much. Peace out. Mario, let's get on a call real quick. I'll send you a Zoom link. Okay, brother? Okay, see you in a while. Ciao, guys. Bye-bye. Guys, can stop recording. Thank you.